Hey everyone. Thanks for joining me today for Cool Clouds. So I hope that you enjoyed our book, Clouds by Marion Dane Bauer. We do have some other great books by the same author in our early reader section and our beginning chapter book section. So if you liked Clouds, you can always take a look in the online library catalog or come and visit us at the kids' desk and we'll be more than happy to point you in the direction of more books by Mary and Dean Bauer. Now, I thought that this was a really appropriate choice for the month of March because we never quite know what the weather is going to bring us, right? It could be warm and sunny. It could be cold and rainy. It could be windy and snowy. So we talk about the weather quite a bit in the month of March and our projects today will give us a chance to learn a little bit more about clouds and rain. So our kit today is a pretty messy one. I think it might actually be the messiest one that I've done so far. Um, so we do want to make sure that we're setting ourselves up for success. So you can see I have some paper down on my workspace and I have my apron on to protect my clothes. So I am going to recommend that you cover your workspace to protect your table or your counter and that you wear an apron, a smock, or an old shirt. It's okay if we get a little bit messy. We don't want it to get out of control, right? Um, if you have your kit from the Indian Trails Library, then you've got most of the supplies that you'll need for our projects today. You do also want to grab a glue stick and scissors, and then just make sure that you have access to water, since we'll need that for our first experiment, as well as our painting projects. And as we get started today with our cloud experiment, I think that's going to be the most challenging project we do together and that may be the activity that you'll want a little bit of help from a grown-up or an older sibling. So you just want, want to make sure that they are on hand just in case. All right, so we are going to start out talking a little bit about clouds and then we'll jump into our first project. Um, so as I said, Mary and Dane Bauer is a fantastic author. We've got a lot of really great books um, focusing on different kinds of weather clouds, rain, etc. We also have some great weather books in our nonfiction section. Um, so this is one that I pulled from 551.576. So the 550s are where you can find books about weather if that's a topic that you're interested in learning more about. So this book here is called Clouds by Grace Hansen. And I liked this one because I thought that this diagram did a really great job of helping to explain how clouds form. So you can see we've got the sun, we've got the clouds, and we've got some water down here. So how does this all come together? It's a good question, right? So clouds are made up of billions of water droplets. And what happens is the sun will heat water so the liquid water changes into its gas form called water vapor. So the water vapor will rise up into the sky, but the air in the sky is cold. So that water vapor turns back into little water droplets. The water droplets come into contact with teeny tiny pieces of dust, salt, dirt, little particles and they stick together and then the water droplets start to gather together to make a cloud. So we can see here in our picture there's the sun heating up the water. We've got the water vapor rising into the sky and then the water vapor turning back into the droplets meeting up with those teeny tiny particles like dust, dirt, and salt and then they all come together to form a cloud. That's pretty cool, right? So now we know how clouds form, but what does that have to do with rain? I'm glad you asked because I have this book, What Are Clouds by Ellen Lawrence, that's got a little bit of information about rain. So in a cloud, the tiny water droplets join together to make larger drops. When the drops are too heavy to float in the air any longer, they fall from the cloud as raindrops. So you can see here's our big gray rain cloud. So all of those tiny water droplets have come together, they form the cloud. They just keep 
getting heavier and heavier. And then some of that water starts to fall from the cloud in the form of rain. Or if the air around the cloud is very cold, the tiny water droplets may freeze and they become tiny bits of ice called crystals. Up to 200 crystals might stick together to make one snowflake. So rain on warmer days, snow on colder days. All right, so we're gonna use that information to help us out with our first project. This is going to be our cloud experiment. Let's get set up for our experiment. So we're going to need our shaving cream, pipette, plastic cup, and purple paint from the supply kit. You'll also need some water. So you can see I've got my cup filled about two thirds of the way, and then I have an extra supply of water just in case. There are a couple of different options for this experiment. You can use the purple paint from your supply kit. We're going to water it down to make the consistency more thin so that it's easier to use for our experiment. Uh, if you have liquid watercolor at home, you could use that in the place of the purple paint or you could also use some food coloring. Food coloring is going to be the messiest option though, so if you do go that route, I definitely recommend having a grown-up help you out just so the mess doesn't get out of control. All right, so once you've got your cup filled about two-thirds of the way with water, we're gonna add the shaving cream, and this is gonna take the place of the cloud. So we're gonna start out giving our shaving cream a shake, 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 can hear it moving around inside the can, right? Okay, that should be good. Now, to use the shaving cream, we're going to pop the cap off, set that to the side, and then press the button at the top to make the shaving cream come out. Now, wherever this nozzle is pointing, that's where the shaving cream is going to go. So just make sure that you're paying attention to it and it's not going off somewhere that you're not intending. So I'm gonna take my shaving cream, I'm gonna hold it over my cup, I'm gonna press the button, and it's going to start coming out. All right, so that is my shaving cream cloud. And you can see I'm putting the cap back on so that we can't accidentally spray the shaving cream now. Okay, so we're gonna think of the shaving cream as the cloud, and then the water down here as the sky. So I'm going to set this off to the side just a little bit so that we can work on thinning our paint. So I am going to add some water from my cup and then I'm going to use my pipette to stir that into the paint. And you can see it's still a purple color but it's definitely turning into much more of a liquid consistency. We want it to be thin enough that we can squeeze it through our pipette pretty easily. So now I've got it on my table. All right, so let's practice using our pipette so that we know what we're going to do with our experiment, right? So when we take the pipette in between two fingers and squeeze, we can use this to either suck a liquid up into the pipette or to squeeze it out. So if I squeeze first, put it into a liquid and then release, you can see now my pipette has water inside. If I want the water to come back out, then I'm going to squeeze the top of the pipette again and it'll release. Okay, so now I'm gonna dip my pipette into my paint. I'm gonna squeeze the top and release. Okay, so you can see I've got some of my paint water. Now I'm going to very carefully start squeezing that out into my cloud. All right, so you can see the top of my cloud is starting to turn purple. Ooh, what just happened? Yeah, I've got some purple paint coming through on the bottom. So just like we read in our book, when the water droplets in a cloud start to get too heavy, that's when we'll see the rain coming through the cloud into the sky. All 
All right, so you can keep adding paint to your shaving cream cloud as long as you would like to. And you can see that in some cases, the paint is kind of running down the sides of the shaving cream. Sometimes it's going all the way through. Right now I'm cleaning my pipette out in my other cup of water because I got some shaving cream inside it. All right, so we can keep trying this as long as you're interested. Um, when you're done with your experiment, then you can always dump this out in the sink, wash the shaving cream, the water, and the paint down the sink, and then you can always refill your cup with water, add some more shaving cream on top, and keep using your purple paint, um, your watercolor, or your food coloring to try the same experiment over and over again. We've got enough shaving cream that this would last us for a while. You can try different colors, um, you can make your shaving cream cloud smaller or larger and see if that impacts how long it takes the water to make its way through the shaving cream and come down into um, the cup. Uh, you could try multiple colors. So if you did blue and green and yellow, you could see what was happen. There's lots of ways to extend this into a really fun activity. But I hope that this visual gave you a little bit better idea of just how a cloud gives us rain. So I'm going to clean up my little bit of a mess here, make sure that my work surface is nice and dry and ready to go for our next project. So I'll meet you back here in a few minutes for project number two. We're going to create a cloud classification picture. So we'll need a little bit of information from What Are Clouds by Ellen Lawrence to help get us started. So this section is called Meet the Cloud Families. Weather scientists use the shapes of clouds to sort them into three main groups. It's possible to tell what the weather will be like by looking at the shapes and colors of these clouds. All right, so let's meet the first one. So our first group is called cumulus clouds. They normally float less than 6,500 feet above Earth. So you can see in this picture that cumulus clouds are pretty low to the ground when we compare them to other kinds of clouds. So white cumulus clouds in the sky mean there won't be any rain. When they turn gray, however, it's a sign that rain will soon be falling. All right, so cumulus clouds are usually fluffy We'll see kind of that traditional fluffy cloud shape on top and then a flat bottom. And you can see that we've got a difference between the white fluffy cumulus clouds and then the ones that we might see when they turn gray and dark and they mean rain. So that's our first kind. Oh, the word cumulus means a pile or a heap. That's good to know, right? All right, so next we have gloomy stratus clouds. It's often hard to see where gray stratus clouds begin and end. When these clouds are just a few thousand feet above Earth, they produce drizzle. Drizzle is rain that's made up of very tiny drops of water. Stratus clouds that form higher in the sky are called alto stratus clouds. Rain or snow falls from them. All right, now if we take a look at this picture here, you can see here is our cumulus cloud. A stratus cloud is gonna be at just about the same level, so that's pretty close to the ground compared to other clouds. Our alto stratus clouds are going to be much higher up in the sky. You can see that's level with one of the airplanes here. So that's between 12,000 and 18,000 feet. The word stratus means a layer. So these are the clouds that we'll see when it's just a really gloomy, cloudy day and it just seems like there's a blanket of clouds across the sky. Usually that's going to be a stratus cloud. And you can see in the picture here are ones that are gonna be closer to Earth. And then here are the alto stratus 
They still look kind of like a flat pancake, like a blanket, but they're going to be higher up in the air. Okay. All right, so that's number two. You ready for number three? Icy cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds float more than 20,000 feet above Earth. So that means that they're going to be much higher in the sky. This part of the sky is so cold that cirrus clouds are made only of ice crystals. High white cirrus clouds mean there won't be any rain or snow. However, if cirrus clouds turn darker and begin to clump together, they're becoming cirrostratus clouds. There will be rain or snow within 24 hours. All right, so if we take a look at our diagram here, we can see that the cirrus clouds have been added. So here's our cumulus, our white fluffy clouds down here at the bottom, about even with the stratus. Here are the alto stratus, so those are a little bit higher. And then way up here, almost at the top, are the cirrus clouds. So these are the white wispy ones. They're often compared to um, a feather or a horse's tail. And then here are the cirrostratus clouds. So those are going to be um, about the same height, but they're going to be flatter and they're going to be darker in color, more like a gray or um, even a black sometimes. So the word cirrus means a pearl or a ringlet in someone's hair. So what do you think? Does that look like a good description for cirrus clouds? I think so. So these are cirrus clouds. We might see those on a day where it's just a little cloudy. The weather's going to stay nice, probably still pretty sunny. And then here are the cirrostratus clouds. And these are the ones that mean that we've got snow or rain coming within about 24 hours. So those are ones to watch out for. All right. So now we are going to use this information to help make our cloud classification picture. I'm going to give you two different options. So you can go simple or you can go more challenging. So a simpler version of the project is just going to be to take our three main cloud types. So cumulus, stratus, and cirrus. So we're just going to have three. If you want to make the project a little bit more challenging, we can add in some of the subtypes to make six total clouds. So it's up to you which way you want to go. Now you're wondering, what am I going to need for this project, right? So for this one, we're going to get out scissors. Um, I've got a paint tray here. Um, you've got some white paint in your cup. Um, you can use that from the cup, or you can put it into um, a small bowl or paint tray if you've got that at home. We're going to need our paintbrush, one piece of blue paper, and then uh, some kind of a writing utensil, so pen, pencil, crayon, marker, whatever you have on hand. So now we're going to start out with one piece of blue paper. And our first step is going to be to fold it in half. So we're going to hold it um, on its side, landscape, and then take our top edge and fold it down to meet the bottom. So now we have a smaller rectangle. You can think of this kind of like a hot dog like a taco. We're going to hold it with the folded edge up at the top and then our loose flaps down at the bottom. So I'm going to hold my paper in my left hand so that I can use my scissors with my right hand. And then I am going to make sure that I'm separating the top from the bottom because I only want to cut one layer. So just this part here. So I'm gonna hold that, use my scissors, and I'm gonna cut twice. So that's gonna give me three sections. And I want my cut to go from the edge to about an inch from the top. So I'm gonna cut once and then twice. Does it have to be perfectly even? Nope. It does not. So now when I fold my paper again, you can see that I can lift up these flaps 
and then I still have a solid background in the bottom part. All right, so now I am going to use my pen and I am going to write the three different types of clouds on each, I'm gonna write one of the three different types of clouds in each section. So I'm going to start with cumulus. So we're gonna spell that C, U, M, U, L, U, S. All right, so that's our first section. Next, we're gonna have stratus. All right, so our middle section, we're gonna write S, T, R, A, T, U, S. All right, so stratus is in the middle, and then we're going to add cirrus to our last section. So we're going to spell that C, I, R, R, U, S. All right. So we've got one type of cloud on each section of our paper. Now we're going to flip this up and we're going to use our paint to make an illustration of what that cloud looks like. So I've got my paint and my paint tray, and then I also have a cup of water here, just in case. You might also wanna have some paper towels on hand if you think you might need to um, blot your paintbrush a little bit. So I'm gonna dip my brush into the water. I'm gonna dip it into some paint. And then I'm going to start out on my first section. So that's the one that's gonna match up to cumulus. So if you remember, the cumulus are the white fluffy clouds. So that's, you know, when we when we draw a cloud in a picture and we think of it looking kind of like um, it's made out of cotton balls or like a, like a big puff popcorn, uh, that's the type of cloud that we're going for. So I'm just gonna use my paint. I'm gonna draw some kind of rounded, fluffy shapes. You can just draw the outline of the cloud if you would like, or you can go ahead and add in um, white paint in the center if you would like. Either way is cool. Okay, so there is my cumulus cloud. I think I am going to add some paint in the center. I like the way that that looks. That makes me think of warm summer days when you just see those big puffy clouds in the sky. Put a little bit more paint here. All right, I think that looks good. So there's my first cloud, my cumulus cloud. Now in the middle section, I'm going to make a stratus cloud. So that's the one that looks kind of like a flat blanket going across the sky. So for this one, I'm going to make not quite a rectangle, but almost, just a line of cloud going across. But I wanna make sure that it's pretty thick because those stratus clouds definitely block out a lot of the sun and the moon when they are in the sky. So we're gonna go for something that looks like a thick blanket. layering some different brushes of paint here, trying to make it look very thick. All right, so there's my stratus cloud. And then in our last section, we're gonna do the cirrus. So that's the one that looks really wispy, like um, a feather or a piece of hair. So I'm gonna actually dip my brush in some water here before I do this one. 
and then dip it in the paint to kind of thin it out just a little bit. And then I'm just gonna do some little wispy brush strokes. So this is gonna be very um, light amount of paint compared to my other clouds, since those are so wispy in the sky. So I'm trying to make a motion that kind of curls the ends up so it looks like like a feather, like a horse's tail. A little bit of a curly cue. All right. So those are my cirrus clouds. So if you feel like your project is complete, that's fantastic. You can go ahead and clean off your paintbrush set it down to dry, let your paint dry, and move on to the next project. If you're thinking that you would like a little bit more of a challenge, then we can go ahead and add to our picture. So we've got our three flaps here for cumulus, stratus, and cirrus. So then we can add writing on the other side of our paper for our other kinds of clouds. So, our first one is going to be our thunder clouds, and those are called cumulonimbus. So that's gonna be a longer word to write. So I'm gonna to try to kind of adjust my paper here so that when I write onto it, I'm not dragging my hand through my paint so I'm going to come up here just on the top of my flap, and I'm going to write C U M U L O N I M B U S. All right, so that's our fourth type of cloud. So next we have our alto stratus. So on my middle section here, I'm going to write alto stratus. So that will be A, L, T, O, S, T, R, a T U S. It's another long one, right? Okay, so that's our fourth, or sorry, our fifth. So we've got one more to make it six, and that's going to be our cirrostratus. So we're kind of combining cirrus and stratus together for this last one. So on my third flap here, I am going to write C, I, R, R, O, S, T, R, A, T, U, S. All right, so we've added three more clouds to our picture. Now we're going to draw each of those cloud types just like we did our first three. Okay, so cumulonimbus is going to be our thunderhead clouds. Those are the ones that we see when a thunderstorm is coming. So those are going to have a flat bottom and a fluffy top. So the paint that we have right now is just our plain white paint. If you still have some of your purple from our first experiment, you can mix that in. If you have black or gray paint at home, you can go ahead and mix that in as well. I think I'm gonna grab just a little bit of purple here so that I can make a darker cloud. Just a little drop. Okay, so I'm gonna dip my brush in my water and I'm gonna take some of my white paint and I'm gonna add it to some purple so that I can make a 
darker color. There we go. All right. So now to draw my cumulonimbus, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to do a line across. So that's going to be the flat bottom of the cloud. And then I'm going to add some puff onto the top of it. So I'm making some rounded shapes on the top. And then I'm going to fill in the middle with my darker color here. So we know that the cumulonimbus clouds may not actually be a purple color, but this at least shows that they're a little bit darker and makes them distinct from our cumulus clouds at the bottom of our page. Okay, so that is my cumulonimbus. So it's got a flat bottom, puffy top, it's probably the one that you don't want to see because that means that rain or storm could be coming soon, right? Okay, so in the middle, we have our alto stratus clouds. So the alto stratus are going to be higher up in the sky. So they're going to look pretty similar to our stratus clouds. I think I'm going to make mine a little bit thinner. So it's still going to be a straight line across, but it's not going to be quite as thick as this one. And I'm going to make it higher up in this middle section, closer to the words that I wrote, so that you can tell that those are the ones that form very high up in the sky. Look at my book and I can tell you. So those are the ones that are going to form about between 12,000 and 18,000 feet. So I'm trying to make a line that goes across. I'm adding a little bit more paint here because they do still need to look kind of like that thick blanket. There we go. Okay. So there is my alto stratus. So now we just have one more, our cirro stratus. So let's take a look. So our cirro stratus clouds are going to be darker. They are going to be bigger than our cirrus clouds because that's when our, our clouds start to clump together. So we can see in the picture here, again, they're about the same height as our cirrus clouds, but they're going to be thicker and they're going to be darker. So I think that this is going to call for a little bit more purple paint. And again, you can use another color if you have that available at home. Okay, so I'm going to dip my brush in my water. I'm going to take some white paint, mix it in with my purple again. Okay, so for this one, I still want my clouds to be kind of a wispier design, but they're going to be thicker than what I drew for my cirrus. So I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to press it down a little bit harder. I'm going to still make that same... Um, shape kind of like like a curly cue or a feather but I want it to be thicker and of course I'm using my purple paint so I can see that that's a darker cloud probably more of a, a gray color in real life but you know sometimes when you're an artist you just have to use what you have on hand use that inspiration for your creation. All right, I think that looks good. So those are my Cirro Stratus clouds. So they're darker in color. They're still kind of wispy and sort of feather or curly hue shaped, but they're a little bit thicker than my cirrus cloud. All right, so how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ta -da. So I'm going to clean my paintbrush off. I'm going to kind of 
blot it on my paper towel here. And then I am going to set my picture off to the side so that my paint can dry. This would be a great opportunity to make sure that your workspace is clean and dry. We'll get out our supplies and we'll try our third project. This project is a smash cloud picture. I think I might change my mind. This one may actually be the messiest one that we do today. I don't know, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, so we're going to need our second piece of blue paper, the white paint from your kit, and then um, you might want to have your pen or pencil, crayons, markers, whatever you have to decorate on hand. And then I can see my paint cup, my paintbrush, and my paper towel. So I've got them close by just in case I need them. Don't think I will, but they're there if I do. So the idea with this project is that we're going to take our paint and put it in the center of our paper. We're going to fold edge over edge. We're going to press it down, open it back up, and see what kind of cloud that we've created. Because as we learned, clouds can be a lot of different shapes and sizes. They can be thin and wispy, or they can be like a big blanket. So if we're standing on the ground and we look up at the clouds, we can use our imagination. We can see all different kinds of shapes um, and images in the clouds above us. So I am using my paint right from the bottle. You can use yours from um, the paint cup that you've got in your kit. And we're just going to pour some paint in the center. So it can be whatever shape. All right, so you can see I have what I think of as a medium amount of paint. It's not super thick and globby, but there is a fair bit of paint in the center so that when I smash my paper together, hopefully it's gonna create something that looks really cool. You do wanna be careful if you put too much paint in here. When we um, fold our paint over and we press the edges together, then you might get a little bit of a squirt of paint out the bottom or the top of your paper. So if you think that might happen, then put down some newspaper or some paper towel just so that we don't get paint everywhere. So now we're going to fold edge to edge. So I'm going to take this side of my paper. I'm going to fold it in the middle so that the two edges meet. All right, ooh, my paint just came out the bottom. Oh, and the top. It's a good thing I've got my paper towels on hand, right? So very carefully, press the two halves of your paper together, and you can kind of use your fingers to move your paint across the paper. You can kind of feel it squishing in between the layers of paper. big squish of paint. I guess I must have used much more than I thought. Okay, so when you're happy with your smashing situation here, then you can go ahead very carefully, peel the two pieces of paper apart, and then we'll take a look and see what you make. Now you can hold your paper um, horizontally landscape. You can hold it Vertically, portrait, whichever way you like the best. I actually kind of like my paper this way. Now I want you to see, what does this remind you of? So I think that my paint shape looks like an insect. So I think that this looks like the head here. And then I think it looks like it's got wings and then some legs. And then that's its tail down there at the bottom. So your paper is probably gonna look like something completely different. And maybe if you turn it from one side to the other, you might see a different shape or a different image in it. So what I'm gonna suggest is to let your paper sit for a while so that the paint has a chance to dry. As you can see, we used quite a bit of it. I've got it all over my hands and all over my table, so I'm gonna need a little bit of time to kind of clean up a little. So the final step of our project, once your paint has had a chance to dry, is going to be to name your picture. So if you were going to try to explain to somebody else 
what you think this looks like, that's going to be the name of your picture. And of course, as an artist, we always sign our work. So I'm going to just kind of write over here in the corner so I can try to do this without touching the paint with my hands. I am going to write insect about to fly. So that's the name of my picture. That's what I think my cloud shape looks like. And then I'm going to sign my name. And there's my picture. Now, if you have a thicker paper at home, so this is a, a thicker construction paper that we used in our kit. If you have something like this or maybe cardstock, then you are more than welcome to try this project again. Put down some protective paper, add the paint to the middle, fold over your edges and give it a good smush, open it up, and your next picture will probably look like something completely different. So this is really fun um, once your project has dried to show it to family or to friends and to see what they think it looks like. Is that the same thing that you saw? Because just like when we go out and we look up at the clouds, our imaginations will help us see all different kinds of shapes and objects and images. So it's really kind of neat to see, are they on the same wavelength that you are or do they see something completely different? So I'm going to set this project to the side so that's got a chance to dry. I'm going to clean up my work surface a little bit. We're going to meet back here because we do have a bonus project to talk about and then we're going to wrap things up. Sometimes when I start pulling ideas for a program, there are so many cool activities that it's really hard for me to choose what to share with you. In the interest of making sure that our video is not you know, five hours long, I do have to narrow it down a little bit. Um, today, I've got two bonus activities for you. One of which is a weather wheel. So for this, you'll use the template, your paper plate, and the metal brad from your kit. You'll also want to have scissors and a glue stick possibly a grown-up or an older sibling to help out. I think that's going to make the cutting part a little bit easier, but it's up to you. So for this project, we're going to cut around the circle, and then we're going to glue that onto our paper plate. So that's going to create the base of your weather wheel. You can cut out your arrow, and then that's going to go on top. And then the brad is going to punch through everything. So it's going to go through the center. That's going to hold your arrow, your wheel, and your paper plate together, and it'll also make it so that your arrow can move and point to different sections of the weather wheel. So then when you wake up in the morning and you look out the window and you say, huh, what's the weather like today? You might move it to sunshine or to rain or to snowfall because who knows what the month of March is going to bring us, right? So this is hopefully a pretty quick and simple project for you to tackle. Um, but I thought that it would be fun since we are learning and talking more about the weather. It just gives you another way to explore that. The last thing in your kit is going to be cloud dough. Um, what this actually has to do with clouds, I'm really not too sure. As you can see, it's made up of a whole bunch of different colors. So it's really not the same color as a cloud. Um, I kind of liked it because the texture is a little bit powdery and because it tears, so it's a little bit different than slime or Play-Doh in that respect. So this is just something kind of fun to squish in your hands, maybe roll into a ball or make into other shapes. And then when you're done, you're going to put your cloud dough back in the container, make sure that the lid gets sealed tightly. So that's going to protect it from the air, make sure it doesn't dry out and you can keep playing with it. And then just make sure when you're done to wash your hands because as you can see there's just a really fine particle that you'll feel on your skin when you're done playing with your cloud dough. You just want to make sure that you're not going right from cloud dough to like eating a snack. So wash your hands, put it away, and then hopefully that'll be available for you to play with for quite some time. All right my friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you had a lot of fun reading Clouds by Mary and Dane Bauer and trying all of our weather related projects today. So again, if you come into the library, we're more than happy to help you find more books by Mary and Dane Bauer, 
or to show you where our weather section is in nonfiction. And then I do want to give a quick reminder that we have two more K-1 book parties coming up this school year, April and May. Registration for those is going to open up on March 15th, so I hope that you can come back and join me for some more great stories and awesome projects. And then keep your eyes out for our summer newsletter um, that's going to cover June, July, and August. We've got some library adventure coming up, which we're really excited about. We've got some other great programs, and we are going to try to do a K-1 book party in person over the summer. Um, that one is going to be called The Care of Magical Creatures. We'll share a story together, hopefully be able to tackle some awesome projects, and then um, take a little bit of a break until September. And that's when you're going to see a program called the Chapter One Book Club. Uh, Miss Becca and I are going to be making it official for our kindergarten and first graders. Um, so you'll be able to pick up a book ahead of the program. And then we'll be meeting in person to talk a little bit about the books that we read, try some really fun projects, and hopefully be able to share an awesome snack together as well. So that's going to be coming starting in September. And for my friends who are moving up into second grade, keep an eye out for Paperback Pals. That is our second, third grade book club. So if you do have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help you out with any of the activities here or any of the information that I just shared in our reminders. If you are really excited about what you created today and you want to go ahead and share pictures of that project, you know how much I love to see it because you all are so creative and you do such a great job, you can share that with our Kid Zone email address. Um, and we love, of course, to hear from all of our friends, get feedback on our programs, and see the awesome things that you make. So thanks again for joining me today. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope the weather is good to us and we have a great spring. And I hope that we see you in the library sometime soon. Bye everyone, take care.